All right, uh, gator tail reverse and planetary and everything. I'm gonna do the newer style. I've got two more of the older style, but uh, I'm gonna show you all the newer style. You got a uh, three eighths Allen. Harder to get off because they put a block side all over the shelf. Basically, take the big washer off. I prefer to cut these because corrosion can get in these wires. So, while I got it apart, I might as well go ahead and double check, pull back the wires, make sure they're not turning green. So, now the reverse clutch just slides off. I already undid the ground, got everything undone. This spacer right here comes off. When you pull these Phillips out, put a whole lot of pressure on them because you do not want to strip these. Now once you have both of them out, I use water bottle, 3M tape holder, pretty much anything you want, drain it. This one has absolutely nothing in it. This is how half the people, now, you can pull that out, it's completely empty. It's got rust on the on the gears. So that worked out great. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't show you that on video. This is how half the shit I get comes anyway. So, we took our big washer off. We're gonna put that back in with about Maybe a half inch of thread so we don't tear anything up. A posi lock called a 106. It fits anything from this to the clutch to the crank, whatever you need. It always has a positive locking surface on these three. Mine has been used so much that I have to put a nail in it to make it tight. So this is a very old one. Now this one has a whole lot of hours on it. You can see how worn it is, but when you're on something this this uh pretty cool you don't want anything torn up once you start wearing your jaws out I just pop a little nail on there is in there. You want that to stay properly. And go ahead and put your washer back because some of them come with aluminum, some of them come with steel depending if you got electric reverse or not. And I'm going to go ahead and put my screws back in so I don't lose them. These have a bunch of Loctite on them too. Make sure you're pushed and seated firmly with a quality bit. The ones that don't go, I'll show you how to get those in just a sec. Want to 
to cooperate, don't force it. All it took was one little tap, break the Loctite. I don't recommend getting a stronger drill because stronger drills tear everything up. Somebody's done mess with this so many times, it's not even on the proper ground. It's not supposed to be grounded here. So, I don't know if these wires are still good or not, so I cut every one of them. That way, I can double check and see if there's any kind of corrosion. When I work on an engine, I want all new watertight fittings. have one you got your clutch basket if you have one stuck you pull on this end and you tap it right here with a rubber or plastic handle now this is the key way from a clutch basket you got to make sure that goes right back in there and what I normally do is pull a bit of grease on it to hold it still that way we know what goes what pull this off and then your spacer right here keeps the uh, the space between the crankshaft this is really important it has a uh, angled side that always goes toward the roll on the crankshaft now you have your seal you never pull this rear case off without sanding that seal reason is there's a lot of rust that builds up there and you don't want to uh, just start pulling and banging on your case cover trying to get it off. So what I do is, so you got crankshaft in play. I push forward and pull back. Make sure it's all the way back. This is just a trim removal tool. I like to push that seal back just a little bit. Without tearing it up. WD 40. A little piece of sandpaper. I fold it in half and I'm able to get my fat fingers in there to work my way around. You go around the whole entire crankshaft like that uh, it's easier to stand on the top so I just roll the I'm not gonna roll this one because this one's locked up I gotta work for it. Now you'll be able to 
pull the case cover off, just make sure you spray that again. So it'll be clean. And you can come look right here if you want to get up close. See in front, there's a 45 cut. In front of that 45 cut, this flat part of crankshaft right here between that angle and that seal, that's what you're sanding the rust off of, that little flat part. This 45 is not going to catch anything. This is a bad design by Briggs. Basically, what needs to happen is this crank needs to be cut down to about right there, just for the seal, and then we need to have a bigger seal. That way, it doesn't affect the bearing surface in here if there's rust on here. But this is what we're working with, so we got to make sure to sand it every time. Now when you get ready to, to put everything back together, before each component goes on the crankshaft, if you put copper never sees on every single thing, you just brush it, brush it on the tip of the crank all the way around, put your one piece on, you know, first your little spacer is going to go, then you brush some on the crank, then you put your clutch on, then you brush some on the crank, then you put your clutch basket. If you do that with every one, the next time you pull it apart, I don't care if it's got a thousand hours on it, everything's going to slide right off. You're not going to have to beat anything or pull anything or fight anything. It's super easy. And so copper never seizes are very important for these. Y'all would save me a whole lot of time because uh, all of my engines that I've ever touched have copper never seize on every single thing. I also copper never sees the, the spark plug threads. I don't know if you've ever had a, a spark plug break off or have issues with that, but that's a really crappy uh, rebuild to have to do and weld all that up and rethread it. So I copper never sees all my spark plugs too. That's the only two places on this engine where you should have never sees, period. Now when you go to put these back together, uh, I use 8090 gear oil. I know everybody wants to argue what to use, and I really don't care what so and so's video says. Uh, this is a a seal. These two together are completely sealed. You have a seal back here, and then you have a seal up here. 100% sealed. So you're gonna have heat and pressure buildup. There's no way for the pressure to get out with an inward lip seal on both sides. So unless you want to blow a seal, which is quite possibly what could have happened to this one or somebody just forgot to put it in there, which is more likely. Uh, unless you want to blow a seal or have issues, put 25 cc's of whatever brand you like. I don't give a shit. Uh, but 25 cc's. I put these things through way more RPMs and pressure tests than y'all have. So just put 25 cc and leave it alone. Thanks.